Hello everyone. So today we are going to study systematics and nomenclature. Now, uh, in order to study it in an easy manner, we are going to divide it into three parts basically. So first we'll study systematics and its definition. Then we'll move towards nomenclature and what is the importance of uh, naming different organisms. And then at the end, we'll also study the codes and rules of nomenclature. Okay, so let's start with systematics. Now, what is systematics? Uh, basically, the word uh, it means the branch of biology or maybe the science that deals with classifying or cataloging various species that can be plants or can be animals into categories. Okay, so systematics is the science that deals with classifying or cataloging various species into categories. Now, these categories can be on various spaces because these categories should be such that it can be named differently, it can be compared or can be studied uh, even in, in advance. So uh, these categories can be on the basis of maybe morphology that is external or internal structure the cytology, the fossil relative that they share. So in now these categories, we can name it. It can be either on the basis of morphology or it can also be on the basis of cytology. It can be fossil relative. Then the habitat where they live in, the ecological relationship that they share. Okay, so uh, how in past people have categorized the organisms? Uh, so uh, in history, one is Hippocrates, who is also known as father of medicine. Then we have Aristotle, who is known as father of zoology. So they both, what they did is they classified the animals on the basis of habitat. So it can be aquatic. It can be terrestrial. And it can be aerial. So we have animals who live in water, who live on earth, on, in the soil, who live on, who maybe fly. Okay. Then the other one uh, was Theophrastus, who's known as father of botany. So what he did was he classified plants on the basis of form the texture that they have and habitat okay so he basically classified them into four groups okay now these four groups are either they are trees or they are shrubs then they are under shrubs and herbs okay so by far what we have studies, studied in the past how people have categorized uh, various species like Hippocrates and Aristotle. They both categorized animals into three different forms, aquatic, terrestrial and aerial. Then we have Theophrastus, father of botany, who categorized plants on the basis of their form, the texture and the habitat where they live in. So he categorized it into trees, shrubs, undershrubs and herbs. Okay, then the other person who is very important with respect to systematics and nomenclature 
is a Swedish naturalist, Carolus Linnaeus. So he was a Swedish naturalist. Okay. So what he did, what he did that is so important basically. So uh, what he did is he classified uh, species. Now he had two books, one on plants and the other on animals. On plants, So we are basically discussing about Carolus Linnaeus. He is a Swedish naturalist. Now he basically described plants and animals. How? So his book called Species. Plantera, in which he described around 5,900 species and then he also published book on uh, animals known as Systema Naturae wherein he classified 4,326 species of animals okay so the way he classified organisms is a binomial system of nomenclature. Now we'll study it further when we start nomenclature and he described these many species in the book. Okay, so we, what we'll do is we'll start with the nomenclature and why is it so important. Okay, so what is nomenclature basically? Nomenclature basically is naming any particular species okay now we already know that there are a lot of names given to the species okay so when i come to the numbers the number of species that are known and described on earth range between 1.7 to 1.8 million okay this is the number of species that are present on earth now these can be plants these can be animals these can be any other organisms okay now any plant or animal or any specific organism what happens is they have their local name okay now these local names can vary from place to place okay and it creates confusion So, so to optimize it, to standardize the everything, it is important to give a standard name to each and every organism. The same process is called as nomenclature. Okay. So the local names that we describe, so basically the names can be of two types. Either it can be a common name or it can be a scientific name. So say one particular species can be known as uh, in, in like various uh, different names. Now sometimes what happens is, is the names, uh, do, they do not share the name with respect to any particular uh, feature that they have or characteristic that they have. For example, silverfish or a jellyfish. So they belong to a different category or phyla and they don't have any relationship with true fishes. Okay, they don't have any relationship with the true fishes, but the common name that they have is contains the word fish. Okay. Then there are various other examples like corn. So corn is also known as maize in various countries. 
okay so one particular species can have different names at different places now therein the comes scientific or technical name so what are the advantages of scientific or technical name is that every species every species has a single name okay now how this naming was done so carolus linus what he gave is the system of nomenclature that is binomial nomenclature so let's start what is binomial nomenclature okay so linus in 1750 linus in 1751 okay in his book published binomial nomenclature now uh, it is a system of providing organisms with appropriate and distinct names so it provides organisms with appropriate and distinct names it consists of two words okay the first word is generic and the second word is specific okay the generic name is also known as genus the specific name is called as specific epithet okay now sometimes what happens is the third word can be a subspecies or sometimes the discoverers name okay like humans they are known as homo sapiens okay now so after that sometimes we use sapiens again as the sub specific name or we can even mention it as homo sapiens linus because linus was the discoverer okay so now when it comes to naming the organisms there are various codes and rules of nomenclature okay so there are five codes of nomenclature okay so what we will start with the first one that is icbn i'll tell you the full form the second one is iczn the third one is ic back and the fourth one is icvn and then the fifth one is i c n c p okay so what is what are these codes exactly so i c b n stands for international code of botanical nomenclature okay then we have international code of zoological nomenclature then we have international code of bacterial 
nomenclature. Then we have international code of viral nomenclature. And lastly, we have international code for cultivated plants. Okay, so basically these are uh, various kingdom specific and we have various code for plants, we have various codes for animals, bacteria, viruses and cultivated plants. Okay, so these codes are basically uh, time to time updated. We have international conferences wherein these codes are updated and the we resolve the controversies if if for example a particular name is not uh, standardized and uh, people don't want to keep that name they want to change it so we have various conferences from for that from time to time now what are the rules of nomenclature we have studied the codes of nomenclature but what are the various rules of nomenclature Okay, so we'll start with the biological names that we give. The first rule itself is that it has one name, one name consisting of two words, generic and specific. Okay, then now how we write it is we first write the generic name and then we write the specific epithet. Okay, so we write the generic name first and then we write the specific epithet. Okay. And as I mentioned, that sometimes specific epithet can be compound, like for species and subspecies, both can be mentioned in the name. So, these names are generally in Latin and written in italics. Okay, so these names are Latin names and written in italics. Now, when we write it in the handwritten form, when we write it with the pen, so what we do is we separately, when handwritten, It is separately underlined. So this is one very important thing, which during the exam, if you don't follow it, uh, you will lose on marks. So when it is handwritten, it's very important. It is separately underlined, okay? And when it is printed, it is, it is printed in italics, okay? Then after that, the other rule is that the first word that the first word that denotes the genus starts with a capital letter. Okay, and the second word that is the specific epithet starts with a small letter. Okay, so say for example, uh, mango is the common name of the fruit, mango, and its scientific name is Mangifera indica. So you can, if you notice, you can see that 
we started the genus name with a capital letter and we started the specific name with a small letter and since it is handwritten what we do is we underline the words separately okay now as i mentioned that this is also one rule of nomenclature that the name of author or discoverer is written after the specific epithet so for example the same name is mangifera indica lin or linus so this is the entire name of the fruit mango okay so apart from that there are various small uh, things like the scientific name is thought of on the basis of its characteristics so scientists when they choose a particular name they keep into consideration the characteristics of that species okay and the name of families and subfamilies again it comes so we'll discuss it further in when we go to classification now i hope you understood the rules of nomenclature the codes that we apply why nomenclature is important and what is systematics if the, you feel any problem or if you, if you have any doubt regarding this topic please feel free to comment and if you like this video please uh, subscribe to my channel and like and share it with your friends thank you